Hey, what's up DIYers? Mike Boars with the Mike Boars channel. Thank you for watching. In today's video, we're talking outboard engines and we are going to reference my grandma's 25 horsepower and we are going to show you how to prepare your ignition coils. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, we are at the lake and it's pretty early. As you can see, no boats on the water. And on the back of that boat is a 1993 25 horsepower Mercury outboard. Let's head there now. Coming to the back of the boat, there it is again, 1993 25 horsepower Mercury outboard. I now have the camera positioned and we need to remove our cover. And in our case, again, 93, we've got this little latch down below and we're going to carefully push down and that is going to unlatch and unlock the entire cover to the outboard. And then I've got this little slot here for my hand, carefully pull up and pull the cover completely off the engine. Now to a close up of the actual ignition coils and the cover, you can see the cover held on by three bolts. And you see a number one on the right portion of the cover and a number two, as well as a part number for the cover itself. And you've got additional wiring feeding into the positive and negative leads of the coils themselves. All right, DIYers, hey, a quick break in the action. And what I'm going to do now is just replace the coils. I'm not going to bore you with that in this video. However, in the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance on how to replace your ignition coils, which involve removing your plugs, your spark plug wires, the two little zip ties that secure the plugs to the coils, as well as the four electrical wires feeding into and securing onto the positive and negative terminals of their respective ignition coils. Definitely check out the link scrolling above. You will find it very helpful. All right, DIYers, we're back at the workstation. And yes, Mom and Dad's Jeski in-house for DIY repair videos during the winter. It'll be rolling out here shortly. Let's head to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski. And hey, if you're into skateboarding down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, will be links on how to build your own custom logo skateboard and hang it on the wall. And we've got a lot going on, as I just said, jet ski repairs. And here are the ignition coils we just removed. At this point, I've set the old ignition coils aside and in the box here are two brand new ignition coils, OEM, there's the part number. And again, the RTV sealant, down below in the comment section as well as description section will be links on where to purchase these. Let's go and open our brand new coils. And the brand new ignition coils are unpackaged and I also unpackaged the JB Weld High Temp RTV silicone. And it came with two additional parts bags and I opened up one of them and pulled out the piece of paper. Basically a service bulletin or page straight out of the service manual for our exact serial number service manual outboard engine. And as you can see here, core change for through bolt mounted ignition coil. And in our case, we do not have that through bolt. And this is what it is right here. I had two halves still installed, which are those pieces right there. However, if you do not have those halves installed, here's what you're going to do. You're going to remove the following parts from the ignition coil. Everything, the rubber boot, ground link, and both halves, as shown there. And you're going to apply a light coat of RTV sealer around the outer side diameter on the through hole core provided. Install the through hole core additional info in the event that that is your setup. However, our setup is as follows. We are going to apply the RTV sealer to our actual halves. And step number one, remove rubber boot from ignition coil. We will do that. Step two, remove core halves and apply a light coat of RTV sealer around the outside diameter of the core pegs as shown here. And extremely important, let's read this. Do not get RTV sealer on these four mating surfaces. These surfaces have to make direct contact to provide full ignition coil output. Take a good look at those four points or mating surfaces to not get RTV sealer on. And then step three, four, and five, reinstall the core house into the coil. Tape the metal ground link to the core and reinstall the rubber boot. We'll show you how to do that now. Got the camera repositioned, I am going to remove the parts bags that again have those cores in them. Set those aside and I'm going to do one ignition coil at a time. As you see here, brand new ignition coil. And on the very bottom, you don't see a circle like you do here. So when it comes time to put this rubber boot back on, I'll put the circle portion on top. I'm going to carefully remove the rubber boot 
And as you do this, just be careful. You do not want to break anything or bend anything. As shown here. And again, as I showed you a bit ago, there is a specific shape on how this goes back together. I'll set that aside. And the tape is slightly different on the new ignition coil. But again, there's the two halves. I am going to carefully peel the tape back. As shown here. Set that down. I'm going to remove the grounding clip and set that aside. And I'm going to peel the tape basically all the way back to this section right there. And I'm going to pull the top half out, and there it is. Again, do not get silicone sealant here or here or on either side of the lower half. Again, just on the outer portion of this core here. There's a sneak peek at the brand new ignition coil. high temp RTV sealant. And all I did was remove the cap, puncture it with this little point here. Have a paper towel readily accessible. And do not get sloppy with this DIYers. All I'm going to do is apply just a thin bead around the actual halve. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom half. Again, you can very quickly get sloppy with this. Do your absolute best not to. And from here, just double check that you did not get any on the leads here and the mating surface that these two are going to come together, like shown here, inside the coil itself. And again, do not overdo it. You can get sloppy very quickly. I am now going to carefully insert the halve inside the bottom portion. And rest it flat as shown here. Coming from the top as shown here. Mate the two surfaces. Push them together. Again, double check that I don't have any silicone on that section right there. And push the two together. And I will resecure the grounding clip as shown here. Bring it over. Bring the tape on to secure the two halves together as well as the grounding clip. And another double check. And that is exactly how I want it as shown there from here back to the rubber boot again with that little circle I'm going to align it properly and slide it back in place and again the RTV sealant requires 24 hours to properly cure prior to starting the engine very important double check everything and if all looks good you can set this aside and we can start on preparing the second ignition coil. DIYers, we are making progress. Both ignition coils are properly prepped for reinstallment. And again, the old ignition coil set to the side. And they did not have RTV sealant, which increased the vibration inside the coils themselves. And, well, that one failed prematurely, unfortunately. And again, we referenced our exact serial number service manual. To ensure we are preparing our brand new ignition coils accordingly with that RTV sealant. And again, do not get that sealant on either four of those mating surfaces, just on the outer portion of those terminals there. And we continued on and finished up step three, four, and five. Again, properly prepared.
Alrighty, how are another break in the action? And again, this is how you properly prepare your ignition coils with the RTV sealant and the core halves or the through bolt, if that's your configuration, prior to installing the brand new coils into the outboard. And again, scrolling above earlier was that link to the video showing the full replacement steps of replacing our ignition coils on a 25 horsepower Mercury outboard. In addition, for your convenience, we will also post that link down below in the comment section as well as the description section. So definitely check that out. And DIYers, that is it. We hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.